I'm Lisa with Ivy Lane Interiors and today's project is this mid-century modern dresser. It's a triple dresser. It does have a laminate top. It has a little bit of damage on the sides. You can see that it's quite uh, scuffed up. The door wasn't even attached, but I love the lines. I love the integrated hardware. Um, everything structurally is in really good shape, but it just needs a little bit of love. You can see the, the tour, I just kind of had to prop it up there. It wasn't even attached when I got it. It has those really cool, it has little cubbies, um, drawers in the middle, and then it has six drawers on the side. So it's a nine drawer triple dresser. And so I decided to just go ahead and start getting it cleaned up. So during the summer, I like to hire my kids to help me refinish. So there you're going to see them in this video. I put them work cleaning and sanding, teaching them the fine arts of furniture refinishing. So I love having them with me, but we're just going to clean it and we're going to give it a really good scuff sand. I did have to do some repairs on the sides. You'll see in a minute with some Bondo. My daughter helped me go ahead and sand the legs to raw because I'm going to go ahead and restain those as well. There were some pretty deep gouges on the sides, so I'm going to sand as much as I can down, then I'll come back with some Bondo wood filler. I'm just gonna fill those in before I prime and paint. So here's the Bondo. This is a two-part um, wood filler system. So you have the putty and then you have a hardener that's in that tube. So I like to, it, it hardens up really fast. So you want to do small batches. You can see I'm doing two little batches there and I will only put the hardener in on one side and then I'll go ahead and apply it and then I'll come back and do the second one because you, you only have um, just literally a few minutes to really work with it before it starts gumming up. So you gotta, you gotta work fast. So do small batches, apply it. Because it dries so fast, you, you gotta work quickly. So I use a Bondo spreader, I'm just gonna spread it out. Um, there was just a lot of, um, even though I sanded, there's still a lot of um, gouges, dings, scratches. So I'm just gonna fill that in so I have a really nice uh, finish when I go to prime and paint it. So there's my second batch. I'm going to add the hardener to that and then I'm just gonna work it in with my putty knife and then I can continue applying it. That's why it's nice to have a couple small batches. Sometimes depending on how much fill I do, I just put it like on some scrap um, cardboard as you see here, or I have a paper plate and I just make several small batches and then that way it doesn't harden on me.
I'm going to use Ben Shellac Primer. Um, this is a laminate top, so you want to make sure you use a really good um, bonding primer. And so this is shellac based um, so it's a little bit more difficult to clean up you have to use denatured alcohol or you have to use ammonia but it's really my go-to primer it's it's really um, it's wonderful to just block tannins it's really good when you're painting laminate because it really helps with adhesion so for this I just use a brush and a roller you can spray it on too but you'll see in this particular case sometimes I just find it's easier just to brush and roll it The key to brushing and rolling is you want to use a really thin nap. So I like to use something with that's under a half an inch. So you want to use like a microfiber nap or um, you could use a mohair, um, but just something really thin, a really small nap really helps it to go on smoothly. And then I'm just going to use an angled brush to do my cutting in around the frame. For the flat areas, I usually like to do the perimeter first, and I'm basically just getting it all on. And then what I'll do is I'll come back with nice long strokes, and I'm going to smooth everything out. Now I'm ready to strip the drawers. I'm just gonna put them on some trash bags. I'm gonna use QCS, which is by Stripwell. It's a natural non-toxic stripper. Um, I've had pretty good success with it. Um, you spray it on, you let it set for 15 minutes, you spray it on again, and then you test to see if it's ready. So you'll see on this one, I go ahead and spray it, and then I'm gonna come back with some plastic wrap, and I'm going to wrap the tops just to make sure that the stripper doesn't dry out. It seems to kind of help activate it a little bit better.
So after the second 15 minutes, I'm just going to take my five in one painter's tool and I'm going to test it to see if it's ready. And you can see it is coming up pretty good. So I'm just going to continue to scrape off that finish. I use a variety of tools. So you can use a putty knife, you can use a plastic scraper. Um, you'll see I'll come in also with my carbide scraper. I'll use like a scotch right pad. And I'll also use some more of the stripper just to kind of continue to get that residue off. After I've cleaned off all the stripping, then I'm going to go ahead and go in with all of my sanding. So I like to sand through the grits. I was able to remove quite a bit of it. So sometimes I'll start with 80 if I still have some finish on there. And then I'll move up to 120, 150, and then I usually stop about 180. You have to use a variety of tools to try to get into all the little nooks and crannies. Um, sometimes it's really hard, you know, to get into all these little crevices. Sometimes I wrap the sandpaper around a Bondo spreader and that can kind of help me get into the flat areas. I also use sanding contours that can help me get into different profiles. So you just have to use a variety of tools, whatever works for you. So what I've learned after working with a lot of pieces and doing a lot of reading is 
your 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 lowest grit is your most important and so usually i start with 80 for actual finish removal and so i want to make sure that i'm getting all of that finish off because really that's the most important grit is getting all that finish off and then after that your subsequent um, grits your 120 your 150 180 they're just refining your scratch pattern so your your lowest grit your coarsest grit is going to be your most important On the body, I'm gonna go ahead and do a light sand. I'm gonna go wipe off any of that sanding dust, then I'll be ready for my second coat, and then I'll be ready for my paint. For the paint, I am using Sherwin-Williams Emerald Line, and this is their urethane trim enamel. Um, no top coat is necessary or really recommended, and the color is tricorn black. So I do love this paint. Um, it goes on really well. Um, as you can see in this area, I was spraying it, and I forgot I didn't actually cover up the legs, so I had to use some acetone to get the paint off. Then I'm going to use some aluminum foil to cover up. You can use painter's tape, but I had uh, aluminum foil, and I just wrapped it around them real quick, and that kept, that kept the paint off. I have taped the interior, but as you can see, I'm also just using a little piece of cardboard just to help with any overspray. I do usually reduce the pressure when I'm doing the interior, just so that I don't have a lot of paint all over the place on the inside.
so my sprayer was acting kind of weird and I wasn't getting the normal finish that I usually do. So I switched on my second coat and I went to a brush and a roll. So some, man, sometimes I can just get just as good a finish brushing and rolling. Again, it all goes back to whatever kind of roller you're using and then really your technique. And so like I said before, you want to use a really thin nap. For this project, I'm using Sherwin-Williams um, contract brand. So I believe it's three eighths of an inch microfiber roller. I'll link it in the description. You can get a really good finish with a, with a roll. So again, I'm just going around the perimeter and then I'm gonna fill in the middle and then I like to do nice long strokes. The big thing is step away. Don't overwork it, let it, this is a self-leveling paint. So the middle cubby drawers were missing their drawer guides and I found these adjustable drawer guides at my local Lowe's. And so the great thing is, is they are adjustable for whatever width that you need. I'm testing them out to see what width it needs to be. And then all you have to do is drill some pilot holes and screw them in. I did take the backing of the dresser off so that I could get to the drawer guides easier. So for the drawers, I'm going to start out with a shellac spray, and this is just going to kind of help seal them and allow that gel stain to go on really smoothly. I like to use General Finishes gel stain. The color I'm using today is Antique Walnut. It's going to be a beautiful contrast to the Tricorn Black. Then I'll seal it up with a hard wax oil by Osmo.
For some reason, the area in the middle of the door went on blotchy, so I didn't like it. I decided to get my carbide scraper. I scraped the whole thing off and started over. I had a few more areas that needed to be touched up a little bit. I like to use either like a chip brush or a fan brush. That's the nice thing about gel stain is because it's not a penetrating stain. It just sits on top of the wood. So if you have some areas that maybe are a little blotchy and they don't take the stain as well, you can just go over it with a little bit more of the gel stain and it smooths everything out. So let's look back at the before of this mid-century modern Bassett triple dresser. The lines were there, the bones were there. It was in really good shape for its age. Obviously it had the laminate top on it. That's why I did decide to paint out the body 
uh, lots of dings and scratches on the sides and on the drawers. But man, I just love that integrated hardware, such clean lines. Obviously, the door wasn't even attached. We got it reattached, fixed those drawer guides in the middle of the cubbies. Um, we're able to get that those restained as well. But after a little bit of love, and here's the after. I love it. Um, of course, I'm a big fan of black with the dark walnut. It's a beautiful, classic combination. It's a very handsome set. The integrated hardware, you can see I lined all the drawers. There's a really nice um, geometric gold and white uh, liner. Very classic. It's a beautiful set. It actually was a four-part set. I did two matching nightstands and an upright, as well as this triple dresser, and it was a beautiful set. So tell me what you think.